Hello everybody, welcome back to Teaching with Magic. Today we're going to talk about the first day? No, the first minute. I made some changes this summer about how my kids will experience my classroom for the very, very, very first time. I'm very happy with my first day overall. Uh, I've been doing the same thing for probably six or seven years now. I've got a blog post about it that I'll link in the comments. But that first minute, I really wanted to grip them. Disney knows something about this first commandment of the Imagineers is to know your audience. They know their audience back and forth. And one thing they know is that when their audience arrives, they're ready for adventure. They've paid a lot of money to get in that front door. They are amped up and ready to go. So when you see the entryway to Disneyland, it's a very exciting place. There's a lot of fun things happening. People are taking pictures, lots of good stuff going on. What you don't see, posters filled with rules, people signing a syllabus, people going over procedures. No one tells you at Disneyland, hey, here's how you use the restroom. Here's what you do if you have to leave the park. You figure it out as you go. You are there to have a great time. That first minute from the get-go is about that adventure. So then the question becomes, how do we bring that to our classroom? Well, for my kids, the first thing they're going to see as they are approaching my room is this poster. It's standing on a poster stand for lack of a better term and hopefully it'll be visible all the way down the hallway it's big three foot by two foot my classroom's way at the end of the hallway it's hard to see anything they can't see me they can't see the door but hopefully this will draw them in what i was going for with this poster was a look like this like the one from radiator springs in california adventure it's fun it's exciting it'll give the kids something to think about already before they've even actually reached the door they're walking toward they're approaching it and seeing this cool thing and then they get to the wall where they will see the posters. Unfortunately, they won't be framed at the first day of school, but soon. But they're going to be hanging on the wall. We've talked about this uh, in another episode. But again, it's that idea, that tease. They haven't met me yet. I'll be standing at the door. They might see me. I'll say hello. But they don't know anything about the class other than they've seen all this cool stuff. And then they are going to be given their boarding pass. I've talked about this uh, in a recent blog entry. This is how they are going to know where to sit in the class. They have their seat number and letter on it. Again, it looks fun, it looks inviting, it's adventurous, there's some excitement going on. One of the things we know about our audience, especially if you are teaching middle schoolers, is they're terrified. My seventh graders, it's their first day at their new middle school. They're scared. And if you can bring a little bit of fun, a little bit of excitement and levity and take that fear down, they're gonna be in a much better position. And while they're outside, Waiting in line, looking at the posters, being given their boarding pass, they're going to hear the welcome spiel uh, on every Disney attraction. If you listen very carefully, you hear all the warnings and things. So I want to play this one for you. You can hear uh, the warning spiel that's going to play for my kids as they're waiting outside. Hello, recruit. Welcome to the magical history adventure, an exciting voyage through time and space. You've been chosen by the Department of Timeline Security to help save the future. You'll soon be boarding Time Machine 110, codenamed The Adventure. Match the seat number on your boarding pass to the labels on the seats inside. Once seated, gather your supplies for the trip. You will need a pencil and the planner you received this morning. Once seated, immediately start filling in the back of your boarding pass, and please keep your hands and feet inside the time machine at all times. Your instructor, Mr. Roden, will be with you in just a moment. Okay, let's review. Let's match your seat, get your supplies, start filling in your pass. Anything else? Oh yeah, enjoy your adventure. So that'll be playing over a Bluetooth speaker, which I'll have sitting outside somewhere up above, hopefully out of sight. But it just again is that idea of welcoming them in. They feel like that first minute, this is Disneyland, I've got them. So here's the back, here's the other way I get to know about them as an audience. Just ask a little bit of basic information. They'll do a lot more on the second day with what we call the launch day, but just a little bit to get to know them, something they enjoy doing. Once I know that, I have something to talk about with them. It gives me that starting conversation point. So they go and they have their cards and done anything with them, and then they are welcomed into the classroom where they will find this giant banner across the backside of the room. This is a five foot long banner. It's huge. I love the look of it. Um, it's open, it's inviting, it kind of has that film strip quality. This should be the first thing they notice when they walk in. On the opposite wall, there's going to be more posters hanging there, some for Choose Your Own Adventure, some for the clubs that I run in school. Um, 
just more of that first minute action. Again, I haven't done anything with them yet. This is all just sensory stuff that they're taking in. And then as they're seated, they start filling out their card. This will be up on the screen. This little animation, which I am going to teach you how to do today. There is some design techniques coming out of this episode. Just this little thing. Just a little bit of balloons. I also have a like colored DJ light that I bought on Amazon for literally $12 that's attached to the ceiling. That'll be going. I'll have some music playing. It's all about that excitement. Again, this is all within the first minute. I haven't done anything yet. They walked in. They found their seat. And then right after that first minute is over, I don't even say a word, and I just jump straight into this video. It's got a short little countdown that runs. You can hear the lady counting it down in the background. There's high energy music playing alongside it. And what it's counting down to is my opening sort of trailer preview video for the class. It shows a lot of the activities we're going to do throughout the year. It's just kind of fun, high energy once again. Because again, I know this audience. I know they're coming in scared. I know they're not knowing what to expect. They've heard all these horror stories from their elementary teachers about how mean and scary we all are in middle school. And I just want to get rid of that. I want to stop it. So I show the video. Then we roll in to the class activity. So what I want to show you today is how to make some of these things. Not the video, but the, the, the boarding pass idea, the moving balloons, all done in PowerPoint. Real simple. Let's take a look. So when we exit out of the presentation and we look at kind of the, the guts of the PowerPoint, we can see this is what I use to create these images. And you'll kind of, well, it just looks like a static image. It's not. If I tap Control A, it selects everything on the page. These are all different objects on the page. PowerPoint works as a stack of papers, same way that Photoshop works. Photoshop's a lot more complicated. Yeah, it's more powerful, but they work in the exact same way. Photoshop calls them layers. PowerPoint doesn't really call them anything. PowerPoint just says, here is your canvas. When you put things on top of each other, you no longer see the things behind them. So if I wanted to make this card, I simply start with the background, which in this case was this image, and I drop the image in, insert image, and I have my image. I can resize, I can do all those different things. If I want something on top of that image, these things are already on top of it, then I just drop in a new thing. So let's just throw in a random shape. Let's say I wanted a star in the little doorway. All right, great. Simple. Now I have a new image. I have the temple with a star. PowerPoint did that for me. I can combine the images if I select all my images and then right click and save it as a picture. It'll come out as one single image. But the other thing I can do is I can move this star. So if I don't want this star in front of that image, I can use the right bring to front and send to back tool. So if I right click on the image, it brings up this menu. If I click on send to back, now that star is behind the temple. It's still there. You can see that it's selected. Even if I click off of it, I can still select it using tab. And then, oh, there it is. It peeks up from behind. And this is a good uh, example of why this might matter. If I only want to see part of the star sticking out, I can do it that way. So it's all just done in layers. So when I did these layers, the text layer right here, the CA1, is the top layer. So if I take this square shape and I bring it over, you'll see it falls in behind the text because it's all saving that layer idea. There's no way that this thing goes behind the shape unless I tell it to. So if I wanted it behind the shape, I can right click, I can send it backwards a layer or two. It's really simple stuff once you start to think about it in terms of a stack. Whatever's on top is what's visible, whatever is underneath it is not. Again, it works the same way as layers in Photoshop. So when I wanted to create the backside of the card, could have used Word. The problem with Word is that it's really hard to line up neat little boxes. The great thing about PowerPoint is it doesn't care where you put your boxes. It doesn't try to align them left and right. It doesn't try to change the spacing. It just puts it in there. So I designed the boxes. I created a text box. I reshaped it. I resized it. Got exactly what I wanted out of it. When you get a little complicated with things, you can create slides like this one. So here I have a background image, which is this one. It's all the way in the back behind everything. I have this text box which is in front of most things but not everything. Now if I play this animation again you'll see that I animated some balloons and most of the balloons go behind this but a few of them pass in front. Again that's all done with layers. It's all just a stack 
of objects. So it looks a little bit more three-dimensional. It looks super cool. So how did I do the balloons? Simple. They're down here. They're hiding off the slide. You can't see them when you first start the slideshow. There they are. They're not there. But they are just off screen. So if I take my balloon and I go to animations, and I have animated a line. I've given it a motion path. So in motion paths, you can change the direction of your path however you want it. Up, down, left, right, etc. So I have this green arrow that indicates the starting point of my path. And if I follow it up, there's this little dotted line. Kind of hard to see with the grid lines, but it's there. It ends way up here off screen. And it kind of gives you a ghosted image of where it's going to finish. So this balloon, this red balloon, is going to follow that path. Now, if you'll notice over here, I have all my balloons starting and ending in different spots. That's because I want them to move looking kind of randomly. If they all start and end in the same spot, you're just going to have a line of balloons moving straight up the screen. It just doesn't look very natural. So when they start and stop in different places, you get that different speed of movement. Now, if you go into your animation pane, you can see here's all my different balloons. They all start at different times. They all end at different times. Looks like they're the same time, but that's just because they don't drag out properly. But they have different motions and things. If we go inside, if you right click on it, you do your effect options, you can see that I have it on smooth start, which means it's going to start slowly and then ramp up its speed. Same thing with smooth end. Bounce end means when it reaches the end, it has like a little bounce to it. It's a cool effect, like if you want a photo to kind of come into your screen, it kind of comes in and bounces a little. It just looks a little more natural. Under timing, I have duration of 8 seconds. I put each one a different duration, again, so the balloons are moving at a different speed. If I raise the duration, the balloon slows down because it takes longer to get from the green point to the red point, and the opposite is true as well. And then I have it repeating until the end of slide. So that same red balloon will continue to follow the same path over and over and over again throughout the animated slide. But you don't really notice that it's happening over and over again because you have the other ones going too. But here's our red balloon. And you'll notice after everything else cycles through, it'll come up again, and it'll be in the same spot, moving at the same speed. So all the balloons are repeating. I only had to animate the seven balloons, and then they repeat infinitely. So it looks like I have a much bigger bouquet of balloons out there. So that's a simple thing. Remember, use PowerPoint. Play around with it as a creative tool, not just as a presentation tool. And understand your audience. Know what your audience is expecting from their first day. Especially if they're new to secondary, they're coming in having six bosses for the first time in their life. In many cases, they're going to hear different sets of rules from everybody. You want to stand out? Don't be that person. Disneyland doesn't bother? You don't need to either. Your kids know how to be students. That's what I always tell mine on the first day. I'm like, I don't need to go over rules with you. You know how to be a student. You've done this long enough. The rules will come up when they need to come up. Let's go have some fun. So go have some fun. Go create some awesome first minute introductions for your students. And join us next time where the plan is to look into video and how to create video. It's a, it's a daunting task, but I think we can do it. So go out there, go teach with magic.